We're here with Spencer McCallum, author, entrepreneur, anthropologist from Chihuahua, Mexico. Spencer, you have, you've written extensively about an idea that you call the entrepreneurial community. Uh, could you tell me more about that? Well, the theory of entrepreneurial communities is very interesting because it opens the way, it appears to open the way to the provision of common or community services through ordinary contractual relations in the marketplace. Uh, a, a movement of social evolution uh, towards a contract and the, to use Marx's term, the withering away of the state because it would no longer have functions. It's an exciting idea. So to introduce the idea, if you're going to create, develop a community, you have a tract of land and you need to parcel it up into, you lay out streets and, and parks and you parcel it up for usable pieces. Now that can be done in either of two ways. You can sell off the pieces, then you have a subdivision, or you can keep the ground title all intact and the houses and improvements on the property can be owned in whatever way might be, seem convenient. But the, if the ground title is all kept together and it, the land is parceled up by a, a leasehold and can be long-term leases or what have you, then what this does is to create a concentrated entrepreneurial interest, a continuing interest in the success of the community as a, as a place to live and come and work and so on. And to the extent that this environment can be made attractive to people and useful to people, then the land value increases as people come in and, and you have a, and now you have a business of a selling environment, attractive, optimal environment, human environment. Uh, the public service is being, being provided contractually entirely. So you have a business, instead of, of selling off the pieces, which it has been the traditional way of doing it in the United States, almost without exception. By selling off the pieces, the, the developer gets his money back quickly and then he leaves to another project but leaving the, the occupants uh, to fend for themselves, to try to uh, provide uh, services and to maintain the value of their, of their separate properties. And so they, and they're inexperienced at this and, and, uh, and they, uh, their lives have other, they have businesses to attend to and all. So they, they tend to form a, a political organization of some kind to finance through taxes and, and regulations and to enforce rules in order to trying to maintain the uh, value of their properties. Whereas as a business, it's, it has a long-term view, view rather than short-term. And the, you have now an organization uh, experienced, uh, equipped, uh, working 24 seven to uh, to not only maintain the value, but to raise it, to optimize it in whatever way you can, indefinitely into the future. So it's a very different concept. Uh, now, we have a lot of experience with this sort of thing, only developed in the last, uh, not even two centuries. The, the first, what you might call entrepreneurial community, where it's the hotel. The first modern hotel uh, was, was begun, the Tremont House in Boston in the 1830s. This was the first one, then after that developed uh, apartment buildings, uh, office buildings, uh, industrial, industrial estates, industrial parks. Uh, then in, in the 1940s began the first shopping centers, then called Park and Shops. And, uh, at the end of the World War II, I believe there were only a dozen in the United States. Today there are probably 70,000, something like that. And, and they have evolved in size and complexity to the malls that we know today. Uh, the, uh, 
some of the hotels today. Well, I know of two hotels in Las Vegas, Nevada, who have, that have populations, including service staff and visitors, uh, well exceeding the population of the city of Boston at the time of the War of Independence. Uh, the, the trend of these rather specialized entrepreneurial communities, and they are communities. You look at a hotel, it has its streets and alleys, its corridors, uh, the, the lobby is the, uh, the uh, 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 city square and perhaps park. We have the palms and so on <laughs> in the lobby. And you have, a, you even, you have the provision of utilities and, and uh, you have a security office there that works very nicely, very quietly. If you misbehave, you may find yourself very quietly outside the hotel. It has the transportation system, which happens to operate vertically instead of horizontally. It's in every sense it's a community. A bit specialized, the more rapid turnover and so on than what we think of as communities. But each of these entrepreneurial communities, these types, the class is called multi-tenant income properties, developed as a business for income rather than for capital gain by selling off the pieces. So we have a lot of experience now. Uh, it, we, well, not only the ones I mentioned, but we have a, a, a professional parks of all kinds. We have a, a medical parks, many such things. So there's a lot of ex empirical experience to study, to look at. And the, the trend of all of these is in the direction of a more complexity, larger size, moving in the direction of communities as we are accustomed to thinking of communities. So it's a fascinating subject to look at. There are a number of, of uh, advantages of a community structured in this way. For one thing, we're living in an age of accelerating change. And this arrangement allows flexibility, a normal organic kind of flexibility as leases run out and come up for renewal, uh, the, the plan, even the layout of the streets can be gradually changed, adapted to different uses. And an example of the problem with a, a subdivision, just one example, is, uh, is that of trailer parks in the United States. Trailer parks uh, were, for the most part, um, leasehold but there were those that were subdivisions. Then came along the, uh, the larger uh, trailers, instead of single wide, became double wide and sometimes triple wide. And those, that, those uh, parks that were subdivisions were unable to adapt the street layout, the lots, to accommodate the larger uh, trailers. So these, these parks became uh, little islands of blight in the cities where they were, uh, whereas those that were leasehold were able to gradually adapt and change uh, to, to new uses. So it's, a, it's exciting in a number of ways. Also, if you look at from the point of view of the, of the resident, uh, if in the residential part, a, a young couple buying a house, it may be the largest investment they'll make in their lives. Well, and they're very concerned about maintaining the value of this, of their investment. Well, the value of, of land, of a site, uh, is dependent entirely on its surrounding land uses, its environment. Uh, as in a subdivision, you have all these separate owners. Uh, none of them have the time, experience, or ability to, to uh, to, to maintain a, an environment around them, around their, their property. But in a leasehold situation, you have, uh, you have a, a company, uh, well-established, experienced, and with resources, working around the clock to maintain and improve the environment of the whole development, because that is their business. Now, the residents can, can relax. Uh, they know that their, their home uh, will be 
maintain as far as its value a lot and they can now they can enjoy their their neighbors instead of wondering are those neighbors going to do something that will impinge on the value of our property uh, the, uh, there are many unhappy stories about uh, the the homeowners associations where people tend to want to kind of police their neighbors and they're, sometimes they almost spy on them. They actually will. And, uh, but now they don't have to do that. They can relax and you can develop real community among the people. And this will be promoted in many ways uh, by, the, by the company uh, operating the community. So that is basically the idea of the entrepreneurial community. And where it, if it will develop and eventuate as, as, it, looks, as, as it looks as if it might, uh, who knows? But it gives us some optimism for the future. Thank you, Spencer.